Okay, so next um, tutorial, um, mini tutorial, just kind of breaking things down step at a time, is twin motion. And we've grabbed our site from Formit. We have established our latitude and longitude. We have set true north. And if you notice from those videos, I've gone ahead and removed trees and all that stuff so that we can get into starting to populate this site and navigating around the site so we can use this as really nice information. Okay, so the first thing, again, um, if you've been following along, if you've been playing the games here, this is uh, a site in the Himalayas. Um, the first thing I've got to do is I really have to change this background. Um, the default background in Twin Motion is kind of beautiful, but it assumes we're th that we're in this crazy city. Um, and so I, I need to shut that down right away. So to do that, again, we're going to go from our list top down. We're going to go right into context um, and urban. It seems like this is where it should be. It is not. It is under location, background. And we're going to take the city to none. The temptation would be mountains. But, you know, if I'm going to be as specific as the Himalayas, those are still the wrong mountains, right? So best bet, if we are trying to, to work with an accurate location, is let's just really kind of assume no background and we will start filling in the details um, as we need to, if we need to, okay? So none is really uh, a good option as we're rolling through this. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do is let's get into putting a few things into the site. Um, and my philosophy is working where my property is out, okay? So I, there are options in Twin Motion, and they're excellent options to go ahead and let, like let's put trees and grass everywhere on this site. That is assuming that your computer is going to be powerful enough to handle all those things showing up at the same time, and just deal with all of those trees and grasses and everything at the same time. Um, I teach with students that some of them are on four hundred dollar laptops to three thousand dollar laptops. And so I have to kind of teach in the middle. And that is we're going to start small and work our way out. And that way you can kind of know I need to stop here or I can keep adding trees, those kind of things um, based on how your computer performs. So if this is my site, I'm going to start by adding in trees first. OK, so in my context menu, um, there are a couple of things that we can do. Vegetation, paint is one of the first ones. And that allows me to set up sort of a group of trees. I can select my paintbrush and I can paint in a larger area of trees. Before I go there though, we can also do um, this sort of tree at a time approach. You know, if I go to my library, vegetation and trees, I can come in and say Norway spruce. I would like one right here. And that gives me a Norway spruce. From there, I can change its age. Um, there are certain things that I can do in terms of growth, or I can say, well, I really, um, at this location, it's not really a Norway spruce. It's going to be something that's a little more pushed in the yellow-green direction. So I can make or bump some changes to specific trees. That also gives me, as I'm designing closer, more adjacent to the building, rather than sort of this large paintbrush, I can place a single thing in its exact location, right? So it's really important to know that that's available. That said, um, populating a whole bunch of trees, a tree at a time, uh, is also kind of brutal. So typically, I'm going to start with this vegetation paint tool. And how I roll with that, I grab um, trees that I think are relevant, at least visually relevant based on my understanding of trees, which let's be clear is not great, but I know I'm not gonna have oak trees um, in the Himalayas, at least I don't think so. Um, right, so I'm gonna grab some conifer trees that look kind of cool, um, that are gonna create a little bit of variety for me, okay? Um, three is gonna be plenty in this case. Um, I'm gonna launch my paintbrush tool and I've got a couple of sliders here. Um, the main one off the bat is going to be the size. And so this is essentially going to allow me to paint along where that tree line is. 
and what I want that to do. Okay, and let's look at navigating around really quick. I uh, kind of like to teach navigation while we're going through things. Um, right up here with this eyeball, I've got speed and even those fly is six, and that's referring to the number six on the keyboard. Inspect, which is a orbiting around an object kind of speed, is one. I really need to be in about drive speed for this. So if I go to number five, you'll notice that when I'm using WASD, I'm now going to be going more around the lines of 30, 35 miles per hour. Okay, as opposed to white walking, which is around um, oh, the three or four miles per hour mark, or biking, which is around the 15 mile per hour mark. Okay, so again, I don't need to do every tree in every location. I just need to start getting enough so this begins to feel like my site. Cool? And so that's going to show up right as a group of objects, which I can turn off and on. Again, I've got my one tree here isolated. Let's go ahead and delete that. So I've got my trees. If I back up, if I need more trees um, within this, then that's where we're talking about changing the density. Okay, so I can come in to this paint group and say my Norway spruce is occupying 30% of this grouping. My uh, Nico fir, 30%. And the pine is 30. Well, let's say I want more pine trees. I can simply take that slider and move it up and increase the density within that painted parameter of this tree relative to the others. Okay, so um, yeah, you know, maybe just a bit more dense all the way around. So I have more. If you'll notice, it also does randomize as it's painting the height and the tone just a bit, not a lot just a bit. Uh, you'll also notice as I'm painting, you get these sort of weird green triangular dudes. Um, those are representing the area that has been painted, right? So if I come back and try and paint this area, it's not going to add more trees in. It's already been painted on. I would need to work with either my density or I could come in and place a tree specifically in that location, but that is already in the field of area to be painted. If I want that to go away, I think there's a way to unset that, um, turn that off essentially. But typically, I just deselect. I move away from that so that um, my painted vegetation isn't selected, or I select something else in my list, and it turns that off. Um, it's kind of a feature. Okay, if you get used to what it's trying to show, share with you, the information that it's trying to share, it's a nice piece of information to have. Okay, so I know my building um, is going to be someplace on this site. So right now I just want to put um, a stand in that I can turn off and on. So I'm going to go library, objects, primitives, and let's bring in a one, me one meter box. And I'm going to change its size so it's a little bit closer to small building size. Right, something about like that. And if you'll notice, it's going to snap its rotation to uh, my site. And, um, you know, that you know, might be interesting, but that's not necessarily what a building would look like in this case. So I want to rotate it around. And that is going to be found um, right here where statistics are. I can change that to transform. And this gives me my selected objects, position, rotation, scale, etc. So let's change my rotations back to zeros. And then I can change my relative height a bit so that it's sinking sort of gracefully into the ground here because that is a ridiculous slope. And let's drop in a human just to make sure scale-wise I'm on point. Characters, animated humans. I mean, the Himalayas, I need somebody in a coat um, because that matters. Um, this nice human seems warm enough. Yeah. So I'm in, I'm in the realm of small house, right? Ultra small house, um, which is what I'm asking my class to design, right? So that feels about right, okay? So I'm going to select this box. Let's rename it house stand-in, right? So that's my temporary. I'm going to hide it because what I want to do next is let's create a little bit of ground cover. Um, if I move my uh, view way in, you could say, it just doesn't look right, right? I mean, there should be um, 
grasses of some kind, rocks, all that kind of stuff in this clearing. So that's going to be another vegetation paint. Okay, so I'm going to go back to vegetation paint. And this time, rather than bringing in trees, I'm going to bring in some grasses. Um, the ones that I find myself gravitating towards in terms of use, um, tall grass looks amazing, but it is a pretty heavy hit in terms of the GPU. Um, so I kind of like this long grass looks really good combined with the dry grass. And then if it's a fairly wild place, if it's not a tamed yard, I like to throw in this tall grass as well. So let's go up just a bit. And again, I'm going to work from the site out. Um, and just for the sake of clarity and what I can see, I'm going to turn off my trees. I still have my satellite photo, so I kind of know the area that I want to paint anyway. I'm going to select my paintbrush, and let's just go right across the top of that. Um, if you'll notice, the grass, I did remove my um, stand-in um, building there, my little house representative, because this would paint right over. It would put the grass on the house, um, which maybe I want some time, but in this case, I really don't. I'm going to rename this to grass. Let's rename this one trees. Make sure they're both turned on. As I zoom in, that grass is going to populate. Again, it hides. That's part of the design of the software. It hides when it's a certain distance away. Um, that's a feature, not a flaw. Okay, uh, that's just keep your computer running fast. Let's turn the house back on. And let's work with the density on that again. So I can select my grass. Um, the tall grass, that's a little bit much. Let's go ahead and pull that down a little bit. That's there more for texture than anything else. Let's increase the density of the long grass um, as well. And that's starting to get a little bit of a flavor that I'm looking for. Um, again, I definitely like to avoid the terrifyingly green green. Um, not that the ground cover isn't often very green when I look at something like grass, but um, visually speaking, it becomes very aggressive on the ground plane. It's hard to see a design past, you know, sort of a neon green, like this kind of tree green, um, when the ground is covered in that. So I kind of like this nice sort of warmer uh, green brown kind of thing. Um, yeah, that takes us through this learning module of beginning to build and populate the site. I guess the one thing I could add here as well, um, again, just sort of breaking up the ground plane. Definitely should have added this in. Yeah, let's do it really quick. Vegetation and landscape. Let's throw in a couple of rocks because um, just breaking up that ground plane with the right kind of occasional object. Yeah, makes all the difference in the world. Simple little thing to do. I don't like that rock. Simple little thing to do um, in terms of time and effort. And it definitely makes a difference in terms of how we read, especially when we're getting a slope this drastic. Um, yeah, we know there'd be a lot of rocks and stuff poking through. So that kind of adds a little bit to it. Yeah. Trees, grass, rocks, ground, all that stuff covered in this video.